Hello, uh, in this video series, I want to cover the ASP.NET Blazor. So, it's about Blazor. And in this first video, I want to talk about the Blazor architecture. Blazor is for web development. So to talk about the Blazor architecture, I want to talk about two typical uh, web development architecture first. So the first one is the very typical request and response model, where you have a browser. Right? And you have your user interact with the browser. And whenever the user wants to see something, the browser sends a HTTP request to the server side. Server. And the server process the request here and returns a HTTP response and what's in the HTTP response is HTML and then the HTTP uh, the HTML will be rendered on the screen and the user sees it and the user is happy so this is the first uh, architecture and uh, a lot of the uh, development technology actually uses this. For example, the original uh, from Microsoft, it's the original classic ASP, right? So ASP, and then you have JSP, and then you have uh, um, the Microsoft ASP.NET Web Forms. You have uh, ASP.NET MVC, and uh, the ESP.NET Core MVC, yeah, a lot of them are using this architecture with some help, with or without some help of JavaScript. And then the second architecture is, um, is more interactive. Um, that's when the, um, the web development world noticed that, that this first architecture is it, good but the performance wise it's it's not great and when the development world noticed that the the browser actually it runs it's it's desktop application it runs on the computer and it has its own powerful um compute computing power and as the client computers getting more and more powerful uh, the smartphone also gets very, very powerful. The browser has a very powerful computing power. Uh, the storage is adding bigger and bigger as well. So then why don't we take advantage of this computing power? So that introduced the second uh, architecture where we actually use this JavaScript running directly on the browser and renders the result to the DOM. Right? And here, uh, let's start from the user side. So the user interacts with the browser. And then um, the browser, the DOM actually uh, sends events. Like the user clicks on button, so you have an on-click event, right? And then uh, some other controls may trigger on-change event. Uh, so on-key down, on-key up, those kind of events are handled in the JavaScript. And then the JavaScript sends, um, calls the web API running on the server. Mm. 
nowadays you have more options, but uh, let's just use Web API for uh, for example, right? So it sends a uh, Web API. So this is a HTTP request, right. and then the Web API actually uh, communicates, typically communicates with a database to get the data. So here, in this example, I was just, uh, um, I didn't talk about the, the details here. But in the second architecture, I have to. So the JavaScript calls the HTTP, uh, the, the Web API, or just let's call it the REST API. And then it returns a HTTP response, typically in the format of JSON, and then um, the data is uh, consumed here in the JavaScript. Right, the data is consumed here in the JavaScript, and HTML is uh, created or updated in the sense to the renders to the DOM, and the user sees it. So that leads us to Blazor. So um, we have uh, JavaScript frameworks, the front-end frameworks. Um, so we have uh, uh, jQuery. Uh, so jQuery is probably a library. So we have front-end frameworks and front-end libraries like jQuery, uh, React, Angular, Vue.js, all of these. Right. So we're asking a question. The React is from Facebook and uh, Angular is from Google. So then where is Microsoft? Right? Everybody's uh, kind of expecting that. Um, but just recently, we have been waiting for a long time, just recently, Microsoft came with a new technology. It's called Blazor. And the Blazor architecture is actually, there are two actually, two kinds of architecture from Blazor. Um, one is the client side, one is the server side. And the client side is actually very, very similar to the second type of architecture. So if I can copy this, if I can copy this, good. And then uh, let's zoom in. So, Blazor is very, very similar to the first architecture. But the only difference is that instead of using JavaScript, so instead of using JavaScript here, right? So the only thing that is different here is instead of using JavaScript, we're having C Sharp here. And that's very good news for C Sharp developers because it means that we can use C Sharp on the server side as well as on the client side. And uh, that opens a lot of doors for us, right? Um, it's, it's, it's such an amazing feature that we can run C Sharp directly in the browser. And if you have been using C Sharp for a long time, you know what I'm saying. Um, JavaScript is nice, it's good, but then it actually evolves in, in a very dangerous speed. So let's also talk about the server side. Um, so Blazor has a hosting model that is client side as well as server side. And let's start with the, uh, the browser. So we also have the stone here. And instead of having the C-sharp code, we basically, the server-side hosting model, we pull the C-sharp code from the server side, sorry, from the client side to the server side. Right? So here, instead of C-sharp, we're having Blazor. Uh, it's a JavaScript file. I forgot the name. Um, but once we go to the uh, computer, I'm going to show you where the file is. 
So we're having the C-sharp library pulled over to the um, server side, and that's why they call it hosting model. So we have the Blazor, the Blazor applications can call the service layer, and then the service layer can call the repository layer, and the repository layer can work with contacts, DB contacts, if we are using uh, Entity Framework. But how the server side communicate with the client side? That's uh, where we have the WebSocket um, wrapped around by SignalR. Right, so it's a dedicated communication channel. It means that we are using, uh, instead of HTTP request and response, we're sending messages back and forth. And um, so this channel is maintained constantly. And that's uh, it's a very smart way. And this blazer.js, this, this, this file is used to communicate with the um, blazer application, this, our C sharp code there. And the performance is also pretty amazing. Um, and this, uh, so the architecture that um, we're comparing the architecture between um, Blazor client side and Blazor server side is that <clears throat> if we are, if this client side application actually, um, we can create microservices. Um, by creating different web APIs or, yeah. Uh, but server side, we can also do that. Um, if we do that, then the, we cannot call the service layer and repository layer or the context, uh, DB context directly in the same machine because this is monolithic. So we, if we're trying to do the monolithic architecture on the server side, then we cannot, um, uh, yeah, it's not going to, be very efficient and if we want to still support microservices then we have to pull the service layer and repository layer outside to a different machine to a different uh, hosting environment um, our, the request response architecture is stateless and the, the second, the front-end frameworks um, architecture, we maintaining state on the client side, but this part is also stateless, right? The communication part with the backend API. And uh, with the Blazor client side, we're maintaining the state also in the client side. Um, and with the server, See, the problem is that we're maintaining the state on the server. So if we're having, we're having a lot of users on the client side, that means we, we're gonna host a lot of state and that really, uh, we're gonna host the state on the server side for you know many, many times and that's really costing a lot of resources. And that's going to be a issue that we need to consider whether or not we are having the uh, service layer hosted somewhere else as APIs this is something we need to consider but at this moment um, only the Blazor server side hosting model is uh, production ready uh, so in this video series I'm going to, I'm going to only cover yeah, I'm going to cover the server side hosting model and then in later videos, I'm going to uh, cover the hosting model, the client side hosting model. So hopefully by that time, the client side hosting model is also production ready. Uh, in, in the next video, I'm going to take a deeper look at the architecture, the Blazor architecture, to explain why we can host C Sharp uh, directly in the browser, how Microsoft uh, does this and then um, how it actually works so and that's for this uh, video today and uh, if you like it um, please gently hit the 
like button that will help me a lot with my channel and uh, please sub subscribe my channel and I'm going to have a lot of uh, tutorials like this thank you very much for watching appreciate it